here's the deal. Space is a complicated thing, so there are a lot of misconceptions and misbeliefs about it. So what are the most common and annoying mistakes that you can find in movies, games, books and other forms of popular media? Well, let's figure this out. Let's start with one of the most common ones the engines. Almost every movie or game simply cannot get it right. In most cases they are simply on all of the time and they keep pointing in the same direction. In real life it's simply not the way space engines work at all. Here on Earth we are used to the fact that to maintain a constant speed you need to constantly accelerate. So for example if you are driving a car you need to keep your accelerator pressed all the time. If you are let's say flying on a plane it keeps the engines on all of the time. If you are watching a rocket launch, well, the flamey bit on the bottom is always lit. All that is due to the friction of air you are moving through. But in space, there is no air, which means no friction and no resistance to motion. Something like air hockey. Once you push the puck, it just keeps going. So in space, you don't need to keep your engines running to maintain your speed. You only need them on when you are changing your velocity. There is a way though when you can have your engines on all of the time in space. It's if you are traveling really far away and you accelerate until you reach the midpoint of your trip and decelerate during the rest of it. This can be the fastest way to get there and at the same time it can even provide you with artificial gravity. But there is a downside that it uses a lot of fuel though. So first of all it's quite a specific case and it also doesn't work for all the maneuvers that movies like to show. So for example if in space you want to make a simple left turn you need to first decelerate in the direction you were and only then turn leftwards and turn your engines again. Whereas in a jet plane or something like that, the first part would be done by friction. The point is that spaceships in movies are mostly modeled on either aircraft or maybe submarines, which all have their engines in the back. And the reason that it is done like that is that they need to appeal to our intuition and our understanding of motion. And because most of us have never been to space, there is no intuition developed. So next time you see a spaceship on a screen with glowing engines in the back flying around in a space battle, just know that it's not exactly right. Speaking of maneuvers, another thing that often comes up are asteroid fields. In the movies they are usually presented as dangerous places that are super hard to navigate through. You have to be a real master pilot to go there and even if you make a small mistake, you crash and you die. And uh, in reality it's not that big of a deal. Actually if you go to an asteroid belt, like the one we have between Mars and Jupiter, you wouldn't even notice it as it is a lot less dense than you probably think. The average distance between asteroids is from 1 to 3 million kilometers, and mostly those asteroids aren't that big, and if you add them up, the total mass would be just 3% of the moon, and all that mass is spread out over a massive distance. In fact, if asteroid belts were as dense as they often shown in the movies, they would simply collapse into a planet or something bigger. This means that even though asteroid belts are obviously cool and dangerous to hit, going through one won't help you drop a chase off your back. Another common misconception is what happens when you are exposed to outer space without a spacesuit. No, you won't instantly freeze and your head won't blow up because of the internal pressure. Those things look cool on screen, but they don't really happen in real life. Exposing yourself to vacuum isn't exactly a stroll in the park though. First of all, you need to fully exhale. Otherwise, the air in your lungs will expand really fast, leading them to bursting. Nobody wants that. Also, all fluids exposed to outer space, like your saliva and tears, will start to instantly boil. That doesn't mean though that they will get hot, they will just boil off and evaporate really quickly. Your body will still stay in one piece though, maybe a little bit swollen. Your skin and tissues are strong enough to hold you together, after all the pressure difference is just one bar. And speaking of temperature, it's considered common knowledge that space is cold. And indeed it is, it's just our understanding of cold is not exactly correct. We are used to experience temperature by touching things. We transfer heat by touching the air and other things around us. However, in space there is no air. So even though on average the molecules in space move slowly, which translates to space being cold, that's not your biggest problem. In space, you can only cool down by radiating heat. So counterintuitively enough, your main problem wouldn't be freezing to death, but rather overheating. And a big part of spacesuits that are used in outer space is in fact cooling. But let's go a bit bigger. Another very common misconception is tied to black holes. Because everybody just loves black holes. There are even countless jokes that roll around the fact that black holes suck. And in fact, that is exactly how a lot of people imagine them. 
giant cosmic vacuum cleaners. But that's not exactly the case. In terms of gravity, black holes do not show any unusual behavior. Unless you come really close to them, they are indistinguishable from any other object with mass. So if, for example, we replaced our sun with a black hole of the same mass, nobody will notice any difference. None of the planets will be sucked in, they will stay in orbit where they are. It'll just go really dark and cold, that's it. And speaking of gravity-related misconceptions, here's another one. A lot of you have probably seen the ISS crew flying around in weightlessness. And you often hear that they do that because there is no gravity on the ISS, which is not true at all. The station flies only 400 kilometers above us, and there they experience almost as much gravity as we do here on Earth, only 10% less. Weightlessness is achieved not because of lack of gravity, but rather because of the constant freefall. To achieve that, the ISS is moving almost 8 km a second relatively to Earth's surface. So effectively, the station is constantly falling to Earth, but constantly missing the target. But it does experience gravity. In fact, if there was none of it, the ISS would just fly off and never come back. In fact, gravity is the only reason it stays in orbit and just doesn't let go. So these are the common mistakes and misconceptions that annoy me the most when I see or hear them. If you have similar examples of your own, you are most welcome to share them in the comment section. Feel free to like and share if you liked the video or dislike if you didn't. Subscribe for more, but most importantly, stay curious, my friends.